Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the CIF. I'm your host, Richard Tiemann, and this is your Game of the Week preview for week number 10 of the 2021 CIF season. And don't worry, there's no need to adjust your smartphone, tablet, laptop, TV, or however it is that you're watching this Game of the Week preview. As you may have noticed, there's been a bit of a set change behind me. It's because I'm in the midst of packing up and moving to Omaha, Nebraska this weekend. So hopefully this isn't something to get used to and just kind of a one-time thing. But we're still going to give you the same great preview content you've come to expect week in and week out. But before we get to this week's preview, let's go ahead and recap week number nine, which saw the Omaha Beef make what felt like a statement game against the Wyoming Mustangs. Final score, 48-6. to Everything that could work out for the Omaha Beef did, and everything that could possibly go wrong for the Wyoming Mustangs, unfortunately, did as well. The Omaha Beef now move into second place in the CIF standings with a 3-3 three and three record and head into another bye week, where the Wyoming Mustangs will head back to Gillette to get ready to host the Sioux City Bandits. Then there was the Game of the Week, which featured the rivalry renewed between the Wichita Force coming fresh off back-to-back wins to take on the Dodge City Law, who was coming off of a bye week. This one very similar to their first matchup back in Week 6, as the Dodge City Law was able to outlast the Wichita Force 40-34 to and get another one in the win column. Dodge City and Wichita are now third and fourth in the CIF standings, which means if the season ended today, they would be the third and fourth seed going into the 2021 postseason. However, there's just enough season left for a few teams to still make quite a bit of movement. Which brings us to our Game of the Week preview for week number 10. There's no history whatsoever between the Sioux City Bandits and Wyoming Mustangs. In fact, we're over the midway point of the season, and this will be the first time the two teams have met. But there couldn't be more at stake because a win for either team would put them immediately back into the postseason conversation. Today I'm joined by Bandits quarterback Dylan Turner and Mustangs defensive back Denarius Antoine. So let's go ahead and preview the game of the week. All right, fans, first up, representing the away team, we have the quarterback from the Sioux City Bandits. It is Dylan Turner. Welcome, Dylan. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Just uh, glad to have you on and big fan of the fan show also. I've been following it ever since I started playing indoor, so glad to have you on. I appreciate that, man. I know it's not uh, the fan show, but it is our game of the week preview, and there's a lot of really good details to this game, really the story leading up to it with you guys and the Wyoming Mustangs. You guys will make that long trip to Wyoming, and trust me when I say it is a pretty long trip, but uh, beautiful country, and um, you know the facility isn't half bad, so it's really about all you can ask for when it comes to traveling and indoor. What's the furthest you've traveled for a game? I should say when I played with the Storm, I went out to Arizona when we played the Rattlers, and that's probably the farthest I've ever been. You know, that's an awesome environment down there. A lot of fun. You know, Phoenix is a great city also. So that's a good time. But this will probably take the cake for second longest. So, <laughs> Yeah, especially because I imagine you guys are probably taking a bus. And, um, you know, I, I've talked to so many players about different tips or tricks or life hacks to making a long trip maybe not seem as long or just help pass the time so that you don't cramp up that you don't get uh, too road weary uh, do you have any tips or tricks like that for these long road trips i don't think there's any tricks or, or tips you just gotta suffer it out and uh, maybe take a pillow and some blankets take a nap that's about it <laughs> maybe listen to some music and other than that it's uh, no matter what the same distance either way so man just has to suffer it out Fair enough, man. Well, hey, like I said, you guys are in kind of a unique position because all season long, um, when we've been talking about the Wyoming Mustangs, we've talked about the new kids on the block aspect, them being an expansion team. And early in the season, uh, talking to coaches and teams and players like, hey, how do you prepare for a team that there's really not a whole lot known about them? But hey, guess what? We're at the point in the season where they've got some games under their belt and you guys have a chance to look back at those, watch the film. So what advantage does that give you guys going over to play them for the first time? Well, obviously, anytime you get film on a team, you have an advantage going into it. And you know, you're able to study some of their strengths, some of their weaknesses, where points of um, tips for the game that you can attack and things like that. So 
you know, we've been in the film a little bit and trying to study it up and see what, what we need to do to come out of there with a win. And Yeah, and for you especially, this is another chance to really uh, find your rhythm with this offense. You were added, you know, through kind of the midway point of this season. Sioux City has not really had the best of luck with QBs. I was at that game when they lost their first QB with just a few seconds left in a, a non-league matchup. You hate to see it. And then, of course, Smith comes in, and he does well, but you just felt like maybe there was some chemistry missing or even opportunities being missed. And so now Q Dylan Turner, who a lot of people know you from your indoor football career. And how did it feel getting the call from Sioux City and now playing quarterback for the Bandits? Um, you know, it was a tough decision at first. A lot of uh, talking back and forth with some people and trying to decide if this was actually good for me to come back or not. And felt like Sioux City had a really good team. The defense was really impressive, and I'd been following them throughout the year. So felt like this was maybe an opportunity for me to come in and hopefully get us to a championship and a playoff run. And, you know, obviously I didn't play in 2020, and 2019 was the last year I played. And, well, this is the last time anybody played. But so come off the couch, it was a little rusty, and uh, the game was a little fast at first. But I feel like picking it up again pretty quick, so – you guys do have some fun toys there on the offense, a great group of wide receivers as well. So how does that help you get adjusted to a new offense, especially at the midway point of the season? Oh, it's very beneficial. Them guys, are, you know, they're able to communicate really well with what they've been seeing throughout the year. And like I said, they're already fine-tuned into everything. So being able to help me come along and develop here in the past couple of weeks has been really beneficial for me. How's it been working with Coach Strobing? Oh, uh, Irv is a great guy. He's a lot of fun. And uh, he's obviously kind of give me a little little slack for just coming off, uh, you know, from being out of retirement pretty much. But he's starting to push me a little more in practice. And I appreciate that. And, you know, obviously he wants the best guys out there. And I like being pushed in the competition. And he's he's a great coach and a great guy to work with. And I really like Coach Irv. Last question. Most obvious one. What do you guys have to do to get the win this weekend against Wyoming? Well, I think as a offense, we just have to get ourselves in better situations. No third down and longs, no fourth and longs. We got to convert on third downs, and we just got to execute. And that's cliche to say, but we got to get our run game going a little bit, and then that opens up the pass game. And uh, you know, I feel a little more comfortable when we got a running game going because you know, like I said, this this is my second game, so we're trying to just baby steps into it. And I think if we execute. And to get our run game established and, like I say, convert on third and fourth downs, we'll be all right. Yeah, Wyoming coming off a really tough loss in Omaha against the Beef. You guys coming off a bye week, but then another tough loss before that against Salina. So both teams, plenty of motivation, plenty of things to play for, especially one of those four playoff spots to whoever wins this. The season's not over yet. Uh, So I wish you guys the very best of luck this weekend. Thanks, Richard. We appreciate it. And, Hopefully we have a good crowd down there. It looks like they've had a great crowd, uh, good good turnouts, and hopefully we get to see you down there. Absolutely. Once again, folks, he is quarterback for the Sioux City Bandits, Dylan Turner. And, Dylan, hey, it's a pleasure having you, and thank you so much for your time. Yep, thanks for having me. All right, fans, next up, representing the home team, he is the linebacker for the Wyoming Mustangs, Denarius Antoine. Welcome, Denarius. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. It's uh, been a long time coming for the Wyoming Mustangs to be featured in the game of the week. And I wish personally that it was under better circumstances. But really, I mean, uh, I don't know if there could be better circumstances. This is a pretty big game for you guys, as well as the Sioux City Bandits, which is why when we talked about it, we said, you know, this one is probably going to be a sleeper for a really good game. How do you guys feel going into this one, especially returning home? I mean, it's always a blessing to play in front of our home crowd. I mean, they help us out as best as we can. And uh, we just hope that we can come out with a victory, I mean, against Sioux City, knowing that we both basically at the bottom of the barrel. So uh, we just got to fight and play tough for our fans and play for each other. Yeah, I mean, you guys were an expansion team, and of course, uh, from the outside looking in, probably not the highest of expectations because you guys have to feel out the league, uh, develop some chemistry, rapport with each other, and just kind of learn how everything works. But 
you guys as competitors, it's you want to win every game that you can and uh, cap it off with the championship. So you guys being down towards the bottom of the standings, a win for either of you would put you right back into that postseason conversation. And I know that you guys typically like to approach each week as kind of an O and O. You know, we're just taking on the next game. But is there a point in the season, and and is it this week that you guys kind of have to be like, you know, hey, th- this is that game that we've been, you know, if we haven't put it all out there on the field yet, like we need to for this one. Yeah, I mean, we preach it to each other. Uh, we 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 gotta all play four quarters. I mean, whether we like it or not. I mean, we strap on our stuff just like they strap on this stuff, and I mean, we we didn't have games where we played a half, a quarter or so, and we never fully put the whole four quarters together. So I, I believe if we all come together and put the, the four quarters together, we could come out victorious against anybody. Well, you guys have had great home crowds, and of course you'd like to win one in front of them. And, uh, you know, you being a defensive player, you want them as loud as can be. How impressed have you been with the crowd this first season? Oh man, the fans are great. I can't, I, I can't say nothing else about them. They are great, and without them, I mean, they make us, they make us go win, lose, or draw. I mean, they still there, they support us, and they cheer for us. And without them, we we ain't really nothing. What would it mean to you, especially as one of the leaders on the defense? In fact, a former player of the week for the defense to get uh, that elusive win at home in a game that's very important for your guys' postseason aspirations. <laughs> we need we, we really need to win i mean we've got five games left i mean we've been scratching and clawing but we got to come out victorious in in in, in this game that you know get our momentum going and then hopefully you know win win the rest if we can but i believe in my guys that we can get it done Yeah, defense has been very good. It seems like the offense is kind of still finding its footing. You guys have explosive players like Alex Noble, but you did lose Gary Brown for the season, and he was kind of one of those big, deep threat playmakers. But as far as, you know, the coaching goes, Keith Russ, how has it been playing for a guy like him? He seems pretty hard-nosed and uh, kind of old school, if you would. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) it's Coach Coach Russ. He's tough. He's a tough one. Uh, He pushes every day. I mean, that's all we can ask for as players. I mean, and all we can do is go out there and show what we can do. But he, he definitely stay on us. Final question for you, the obvious one. What will it take to beat Sioux City this weekend? A defense got to do their job. We got to stop them from scoring. And offense, I'm, I'm right with them to the wheels come off. I mean, it's been rough, but I believe they go get it together. And together, I mean, we should come out victorious. Well, I love the faith that you have in your teammates, your defense, and your squad overall because it's not easy, especially being an expansion team, coming into a whole new environment. But I like that you guys have that ride-or-die mentality and you believe in each other because that's really important at this phase of the season. So, Denarius, I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, man. All right. Once again, folks, he is Daenerys Antoine, linebacker for the Wyoming Mustangs. They're hosting the Sioux City Bandits this Saturday in your Week 10 Game of the Week. Hey, you have a good one. Enjoy the fans. Enjoy the game. And best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good one. And one more big thank you to Dylan Turner and Denarius Antoine for joining me on this edition of the Game of the Week preview. That game will be this Saturday in Gillette, Wyoming. Kickoff is at 8 p.m. Central Time. If you cannot attend, you can watch it live on the CIF Network channel on YouTube.com. That also goes for our other Week 10 game featuring the Dodge City Law taking on the Salina Liberty. Kickoff is at 6.30. Who will be the game of the week next time? You'll just have to tune in and find out. Until then, I'm Richard Tiemann, and this is Inside the CIF.